my kids can ride her. She's so uh, scared, and I can touch. I can't touch her, and I can't get near her ears. And um, I can't let my daughter uh, go for a ride alone because uh, she's so nervous. Oh. She's dangerous. Sweetie. I want a calm horse she can take out for a ride alone. Yeah. Hi, sweetie. <coughs> so first I will just let her be free. Yeah. And I would try to, to get a little bit of contact. The horses are prey animals and we are predators. Yeah. So Good. Yeah. instantly they will fear us. So it's very important for me in the beginning to show her that I'm not something that she has to fear. So because she's so tiny, I decide to, to make myself a little smaller and go down here. Through my breath, I show her that I breathe very slowly and that, uh, that I'm very calm and that makes her feel safe. Yeah. And I get to touch her, it's very good. It's not that nervous right now. The owners told me that she was very scared and they couldn't touch her head and they couldn't touch her ears. So I will see what happens when I try touching her ears. She allows it. It's very good. For me, the ears are very important because the ears are the place that, that horses protect the most. So the second I can touch a horse's ears, then I can touch them everywhere. Good girl. You want to come? Good girl. So now it's all about the leadership. I have to establish a leadership. I have to um, make her understand that, that I'm the better leader. Good girl. Stop. See, every time she's like, doubting me a little bit, not following exactly what I'm asking her to. I'm backing her up, backing her up a little bit or sending her away. Ah! Now she took over the leadership. It's a um, big reaction that she actually chooses to jump the fence, but it, it all talks about her, last ex her past experiences. She says that, no, I have learned that yeah. people don't always treat me yeah. the best way, so I have to take care of myself. So if you ask me to freely give up taking care of myself and only trust you as a human being, then I will rather just say no and run away. We have to be able to touch our horses everywhere and have them trust us still. Good girl. Come on. Good girl. Now she's licking and chewing again. Giving up a little bit more control. It's very good. Good girl. Good girl. It's a lot harder for a horse to follow me in a trot than it is in a walk. Of course, because all the movements get faster and... Come on, yeah. It's too hard, she says. She says no. So I let her run away. I give her a little bit of time to think about it and she goes to the corner. 
And in a minute, she will take a decision. She will lick and chew, lower her head, put her ears a little bit back, give me submissive signals and tell me that, okay, I will choose to do what you say. Horses need a leader. It's deep down in their instincts, they know that they can survive without a herd and without a leader to protect them. She, she's shaking when, I'm, when I move close to her. her. Her whole body is telling me that she has had a lot of bad experiences. She's testing it. She's testing, are you really a better leader than I am? Can you really take care of me? There. I'm not giving her this corner to punish her. I'm giving her a place that she can go whenever she needs a little break. I need to think about the training. This is the same thing a leader horse out in the herd will do. They will ask the horse to move a little bit away, go away, go to the corner. So she knows this. She knows exactly what's going on. She understands it. Good girl. Still a little tense. Still a little tense. Come on. Good. Good girl, come. That's right. Oh. Good decision she made. So because she's so tense, I will start to look at her body a little bit. To see, sometimes when horses have a very scared behavior, it can be because they have an injury or pain somewhere in their body. Start by her back, see? Always when you put pressure on a horse's back, there will be a reaction, and that reaction should be that they will lower their back a little bit. But her reaction already here is a little bit bigger. When I put a little tiny pressure here, her head goes all the way up, and it looks like she actually has pain right here. See, there I come. So when I, I continue this training with this pony, I will avoid putting a traditional saddle on her because it's very clear to me that she tells me she has a problem in this area where the saddle is lying, right there. I think she did a good job because I was told that this pony was very nervous and, and they weren't able to touch her ears or head at all. So al already now she took a lot of decisions today. She allowed me to get in her face, in her mouth, in her ears. She allowed me to, um, to touch her everywhere, and she already accepted the leadership a little bit by following me in walk and in trot. So that was a very good training session. Yeah, yeah. And she told me she had a problem with the saddle. Yeah, licking and chewing. The horse is talking. And I should be able to just get on her back. Good girl. See, she has no problem with the rider. No problem with me being here. But she would have a problem with the saddle. Good girl. So this is the second time I work with this pony. The first time I worked with her was this morning. I worked with her for half an hour, and now I have worked with her for almost half an hour again. And, um, and it's the first time I ride her with a bridle on, a bridle without a bit. I never use a bit, so this is the bridle that I use. Good girl. Oh. And she's calm and she's listening, so it's very good. My goal is that she's ready to be ridden by her owner, a nine-year-old girl, by the end of the day tomorrow. Yeah.
I'm trying to establish the same leadership out here, but it's very difficult because she's testing the big arena and it's a big, uh, it's a lot bigger. So she already is figuring out that she can run away from me. But she understands this training from yesterday and um, it will just take her a few seconds and she will accept it. And also she's playing with it a little bit. And, um, and she does that because this is the exact same way that uh, that 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 the horses would do, and 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 they do it through game and through play. Hi, sweetie. Ah, uh -uh. bad idea to run in with a stallion. Good girl. The fast little one. You are such a silly, silly, silly little pony. But she is playing. Good girl. Good. Girl. Yeah, I'm checking her ears, just starting off by touching her ears, reminding her that she came a far way yesterday and that she actually made a lot of good decisions and she allowed me to be in her ears, which actually means that she let go of a lot of fear and let me be, let, let, allowed me to touch her everywhere. Now she remembers. I just had to establish this first contact. It took her a little while because it's a lot harder out here in the big arena. I also have to remind her that she's not afraid of this whip. <clears throat> you never know what kind of experiences horses have had in the past with whips. So I'm just gonna tell her I'm not gonna hurt you with my whip. Good girl. I know, it's a little scary. A whip is a little scary. But I'm not gonna hit you, I'm not gonna hurt you. No, such a beautiful little girl. Now she's licking and chewing and now she's accepting. Det er fint, ikke? Hun har gjort det så fint, den lille bunny. Og så prøv lige at stoppe hende en gang. Flot. Og I går igen. When I came here uh, now, she came to me. My pony came to me. And I could touch her, so yes. That's amazing. Yeah. Det er den vej. Drej hende. Ja, rigtig. Og stoppe hende. Ja. Så prøv du at ride over mod B. And Julia could, uh, my daughter could go with her alone and uh, 
without anything. It's just uh, wow. Jeg prøver at stoppe hende, Amazing. og redder den her vej rundt. Ja. Tro på, du kan, skat. Det er rigtigt. 